Page 28. Plaisir or plaisir d'amour. I don't speak French. I don't know how. It's just the joy of love. Okay, let's leave it at that. At the top of the page, broken chords and three, four time. There's all kinds of patterns for broken chords. And you know, you have chords, you can block chords or when all the notes are played at the same time. And a broken chord is anything else. Well, a lot of times at three, four time, the pattern is just bottom and triads at bottom, middle, top. It's just a handy way of doing it. Don't have to do it that way. If you're going to improvise or want to improvise or then this is one of the patterns you can use in the left hand from time to time. You just keep it in mind. So much for broken chords. Now for this joy of love, three, four time, one sharp when the key is G major. All the F's are going to be sharp. Let's take it one hand at a time. You're starting out here on beat three, it's pickup beat. If you look at the last measure, it's got two counts in it. That makes sense because then the third beat of that measure is at the beginning. That's Beat three. Three. You reach up, third finger, connect them. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, that's tied. And then just f then four. So we need fifth finger come. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, lift up and come down. Now they give you a two one. What is going on there? Well, that's known as a finger substitution. I do a lot of finger substitution because I like to play things legato with the fingers as like an organist will do a lot of finger substitutions. I do these two. So you play it with second finger and while you're holding it down, you put your thumb on it and let the second finger go off and do something else. And so it's there. And so it can play it legato and feel it legato. And this way, you're in this position. It's ready to, don't forget the F sharps. It's in the key signature. Now reach up. So forth. And that last note is not tied. That, that curved line is a slur. I'll come back to that when I get the hands together. So you gotta play it again. Left hand. Well, we got the broken chord. You're starting out with a G chord. And then the 5-7 chord with a D7 chord, and then the 1 chord again. See, we're in the key of G, so it's 1. And this is what we're doing for the most part. And then in the second line, last two measures, you get a 1 beat rest before it to come down to C. And now you're going to go up the keyboard here, and then next one, just scrunch up a little bit. Play them all legato. Right, scrunch up again. Reach up, thumb. And now reach down not quite an octave, almost, to the D. And then the next measure, scrunch up, little finger on the F sharp, and then one chord. You're moving around with the left hand. You want to get to where you can do this without looking at the keyboard for the most part, eventually. So here, both hands together, but keep this left hand legato. I'll come back to this in a minute. So here, as you're here and then, and as you play that, get the left hand down. So that again, the second measure, the second line is here. I mean, you got to play that last note again. It's not a tie, it's a slur. It's weird when they use the same symbol for multiple things. It can get confusing. Get rid of any hesitations. The beat needs to be steady. It doesn't need to go as fast as I played it because that probably should have slowed that down a little bit fast. And then we can add, well, the articulation, you're, it's all legato except for the between the phrases. You're lifting up. So it's here. Connect all of this in both hands. Left hand connect up, but in the right hand we're going to lift up. Again, lift up between the C and the D. A little silence there. And 
in the left hand here in the slur, connect the left hand. Don't lift up before that slur. Connect it. The slur is to indicate that you connect these notes, all four of those notes together. Connect them together. Really the song ended with the measure before. That's it. When you played that, you're done. The words are done, you're done singing, that's it. This last part is like a, a short little coda they stuck on it. So that one is not part, it's not really melody, it's part of the chord. It's different. And that's important because when we get to the dynamics, which I'm about to talk about, how you, it affects how you play it. So we start out soft, that's the melody. The left hand just needs to be in the background. So here's soft, and you're going to crescendo up, don't go very high, maybe moderately soft. It's a little louder, just moder up to moderately soft and then stay there. Until you get down to the bottom, and you're going to decrescendo back down to soft. You can actually go to very soft, but this is tricky here at the bottom on the last four measures where that arrow is, the hairpin, because you're here. Each note in the right hand is a little softer. Softer. The left hand has to be very soft. Just keep the left hand out of the way. note that's part of the chord that's part of what the left hand was doing so you have to play that as in the same loudness as the left hand see so it's so the again the last line is here so that last note is very soft you don't want it to sound like part of the melody then when you repeat it, you, you go back up, because you're probably softer than soft here, so then you go back up to soft and do it again. However, there's a note at the top where the second time you play it, they want both hands AVA, which means both hands go up an octave. So instead of here, you're up here. So at the end, at the bottom, the first time you're here, The left hand doesn't play on the pickup beat. They should have put in a quarter rest for the left hand there at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you just lift up, move. It's the end of a phrase. You're going to move. And as you play that, you can move the, the, the left hand up. So with the last two measures at the bottom and repeating, it's here. So forth. You have to be careful because when you get up here, it's easy for the left hand to drown out the right hand. And all you hear is the left hand. So you got to be really conscious of this. Play the left hand almost as soft as you can. So, yeah, watch out. Don't let the left hand... See, it's part of that, just the way we think, the way we do things, is that when we get busy, like in the left hand and all these quarter notes, we will focus on that because there's more going on. And when we do that, we just naturally tend to play it louder. It's just the way it works. So we have to be conscious of it and fight that and keep it soft. We want to hear the boring part, the slow part. That's what we want to hear. Keep that other, the busy stuff out of the way. <laughs> Speed-wise, it says adagio moderato, which is moderately slow, sort of. Adagio is slow. It's a range. How do you feel it? In other words, this is not a fast piece. And how Adagio Moderato depends on how you feel it. You play it as you feel it. So just how Adagio do you feel, I guess. So you can find recordings of people singing this or arrangement playing it to get an idea if you're not sure. But again, 
everybody's going to take it at a little different speed. There's no one set speed it must go. So you decide on what you think moderately slow is. Not real slow, just moderately slow. Then they've added pedal. Alright, well, you don't need pedal on this, but let's talk about it. When we use pedal, there's specific reasons why we use it. I hope. You don't just use it to use it or use it to be lazy. I think some people do. They use it just to be lazy because it can cover up mistakes. The pedal just kind of blurs things together. You don't notice things. It's one of the reasons that we always learn a piece without pedal first. We're forcing ourselves to listen carefully and do it correctly. One of the reasons we use pedal is to help provide a little color, overtones, color, to long notes. And that's what we're really doing here. You see, you'll notice on each of these three lines, when the pedal is used, it's used when the right hand has that long note that's held out for five counts at, you know, on all of them. All we're doing, because otherwise you play the note and it just kind of sits there and dies away and ugh. But if you can add a little color to it, it helps to flavor a little bit. It get, makes it a little more interesting to listen to. And that's one of the reasons we use pedal. So when I use pedal, I'm going to push the notes down or first and then the pedal. So it's here. However, I disagree with them because they're holding the pedal down throughout the both measures. Here. And lifting it up. No. You see, a lot of books, including these method books, they're not accurate on when you push the pedal down and when you lift it up. That's where a teacher comes in. They've just given you the general idea, use the pedal here. Well, I tell you to push it down after you play the notes, so that line should be just after the notes, not under them. And I would like to hear the phrasing in the right hand. I want to hear a little silence there. So I'm going to lift the pedal up with the right hand so I can hear the silence. The left hand is legato, it's staying down. So I hear that. And the same thing in the second line. I push the notes down first. I'm lifting the pedal up with the right hand so I hear silence before I go on. I want to hear the phrasing. And at the end, the last two measures, again, push the pedal down after the notes and lift the pedal up with the hand. Both times, whether you repeat or not, when you lift the, that hand up, lift the key up, lift the pedal up with it. And that's how I suggest you do the pedaling here. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes. I don't think the rhythms are too much of a problem, but the notes. And we will repeat it, and we will go up an octave. You don't have to, but okay. Or maybe you just put one hand up an octave and leave the left hand where it is. The problem there is it's easier for the left hand to overpower the right, so you can experiment with it. I'll give us two counts. Let's try it together very slowly. I'm not going to do the dynamics, just the notes and the phrasing and the pedaling or whatever. Ready, go.
One, two, off.